with Ronda Rousey accusing a WWE star and more. This is Wrestling Rambles. My name is John, and you're watching the Wrestling Report. Before we move on, make sure you subscribe to Wrestling Rambles with notifications on, and don't forget to like the video. Demanding equal pay for women in pro wrestling, Becky Lynch said this on The Breakfast Club. The last contract I signed was three years ago. I was coming back after having my kid. When I left, I left on top. It's one of those things where sometimes in a male-dominated sport, we're historically like, thank you, thank you for that. I don't want to make any waves. There is no reason why I should not be getting paid the same as a top guy. Because of my gender? No. You can put me in any major event and it makes sense i've proved that time and time again so compensate me fairly please Talking about a possible return to pro wrestling, Goldberg noted on the Drinking Bros podcast, when you're a professional wrestler by trade, you never retire until you're dead. I've been asked a couple times, but it's hard to break me away. I've been hanging on the sidelines for four years with my son. My wife and I moved here for the sole reason of watching our son grow up in an unbelievable surrounding, and it's been fabulous. Living out that script for the last four years, me not having to go back and forth to Hollywood and do anything to be able to set our time aside because he plays baseball, he plays football, so we've just been parents for four years and it's just been the best part of my life. It's awesome. When it comes to details regarding Mercedes Monet's deal with AEW, Ringside News wrote, One notable change is Monet's new entrance theme, which she produced herself. The decision to create a new theme stemmed from the fact that her original theme bore striking similarities to Criss Cross's Jump, raising concerns over copyright clearances. However, sources revealed to Fightful Select that the new theme successfully emphasizes Monet's CEO nickname aligning with her persona. During her debut at AEW, Monet received support from fellow wrestlers Naomi, Tamina, and Bailey, who attended the event. AEW talent interacted with them with assurances from the promotion that they wouldn't be filmed, highlighting the camaraderie and solidarity within the wrestling community. Monet's partnership with NJPW also remains significant, with NJPW sources indicating significant plans and hopes for her. Originally slated to win the NJPW Strong title last year, an injury prompted an audible showcasing Monet's adaptability and professionalism. In terms of her debut, original pitches included consideration for the Jacksonville Homecoming Dynamite, demonstrating the meticulous planning and deliberation behind Monet's introduction to AEW. Additionally, Monet's contract with AEW includes perks such as her own locker room, a privilege occasionally extended to female talent in the promotion. As Mercedes Monet continues to make waves in AEW and beyond, fans eagerly anticipate her future endeavors and the impact she'll undoubtedly have on the wrestling landscape. Asked if he had ever considered making an AEW comeback, Cody Rhodes told the MMA Hour, Oh, no, and it's not in any way a negative towards them. It's just, I know I didn't win the title at WrestleMania 39, but I was in the spot I always dreamed of. And I know how lucky I am to be in that spot, being there in the poster amongst other talented people. When I see the 2K cover, they didn't hand me the exact ball saying, Hey, you're the quarterback. They did give me responsibility being Nick and Hunter. I feel that it would have been just against my being because I was slotted there. You helped put me there and I'm growing it behind what they thought it would be. So it never crossed my mind and not in a negative towards any other places.
Discussing The Rock's return to WWE, Cody Rhodes said this on first take. I think it's different than anyone anticipated. The Rock is a Mount Rushmore pro wrestler sports entertainer. If you ask anybody who is your Mount Rushmore, The Rock is on it. However, he came back. I'll just step into the main event with Roman Reigns. Me and my cousin do this family thing. I was so blessed that the fans did not want that. They wanted me to finish the story at WrestleMania 40. Because of that, the byproduct is the final boss, Rock, the final boss. The only comparison I can make in terms of watching him from the outside looking in feels very Hollywood Hulk Hogan. It's a whole other layer. I don't want to say all positive things about The Rock, but I can tell you that's the staying power. You turn this and make it into something incredibly unique and very special. Going over The Rock bringing up his mother in their feud, Cody Rhodes said this regarding it on the Today Show. You know, it's gotten somewhere when you're bringing the moms into it. My mom told me she was going to bring her bear spray to WrestleMania. I had to let her know you can't bring that into the stadium. My mom hasn't been a part of wrestling. She married my dad when he was at the height of his fame with the industry. She's seen all this. I don't think Rock knows this, and I ain't going to be the one to tell him my mom's usually asleep when the show's on so she's coming into wrestlemania week in philadelphia probably with everyone wondering what she's gonna do who knows she's the best she's seen it all she's perfect she'll be there in the front row rock ain't getting nowhere near her and if i could say anything about the rock's mom lovely lady As Ronda Rousey has alleged that WWE discriminated against women and made other derogatory comments towards the company, commentator for the promotion, Corey Graves, responded to this telling wrestle binge, Listen, I take everything with a grain of salt. Listen, if you're in this business for any duration, you get used to letting those sort of things roll off your back. Everybody has a different experience in WWE or in the wrestling business. Not everybody accomplishes what they set out to accomplish. Some people never expect to love it and fall madly in love with it. You look at a guy coming from another world like a Logan Paul who's taken to this like a fish to water. He's having a very different experience. Ronda came from the combat sports world, which is a very different world despite being the same general flavor as wrestling as WWE. I've always gotten along well with Ronda. Her personal experience is her personal experience. When my name is mentioned, I can can add something but you never really fault anybody she's entitled to her opinion i don't necessarily say i'm inclined to agree and i may downright disagree sometimes but people are entitled to their opinions and i'm sorry if she feels that way she's got a lot of fans around the world who were grateful for her time here Recalling an experience she had at a hotel recently, Chelsea Green wrote on X, Man, one night you're wrestling at Barclays Center having the time of your life and the next you're being kicked out of Fairmont Hotels and accused of being an escort because of your outfit. Life is funny. Maybe next year I won't celebrate WrestleMania weekend at the Plaza Hotel, LOL. Asked if she had come into contact with any of Vince McMahon's misconduct, former WWE and UFC star Ronda Rousey told News Nation, not Vince personally towards me, but the company culture definitely. One time, I was walking to go talk to Triple H in the writer's room. I was standing there with Bruce Pritchard and another one of the writers. This guy grabs the string of my sweatpants and no one reacts as if this is abnormal. He grabs it and starts going down the hall and I'm like, what the F was that? Why are you grabbing the string of my sweatpants? If my husband was standing here next to me, would you feel comfortable walking up to me and grabbing the string of my sweatpants? Nobody around me acted as if it was abnormal. All the guys around me were just like, it's part of the day. I'm like, if this guy is coming up to me and doing this kind of stuff to me, 
where there are other people around what's happening to these other girls when it's not in a hallway that really put me on edge to where not only is this behavior prevalent but it's so prevalent that people don't even realize it's a problem anymore i know exactly what he looks like and i'm blanking on his name is this part of my concussion test drew gulak drew gulak that's who it was i confronted him later and i was like if i ever hear about you putting your hands on any other women like this or doing anything like this to me ever again we're going to have a problem he was like no 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 i'm glad you said something to me he really backpedaled but it put a sour taste in my mouth about the culture there and what's considered acceptable on how to touch and treat the women in the hallways and anywhere Responding to the previously mentioned allegations against him from Ronda Rousey, Drew Gulak wrote this on X. Backstage at a WWE event in 2022, I saw Ronda talking with a group in the hallway. I stopped to say hi and shake all their hands. And in an attempt to shake her hand, I accidentally touched her drawstring. Complete accident. And one that I had apologized to her for the mishap. Speaking about Kenny Omega making his way to WWE, Bully Ray noted on Busted Open Radio. That's why I say I'd love for a guy like Kenny Omega to work with a Randy Orton because Omega and Orton would be amazing when you bring these two styles together and Orton would show Omega that you show Omega that you only have to do something one time to make it mean that much more if you want to learn the right way wwe is where you learn the right way asked about cm punk's comments regarding aew on the mma hour eddie kingston said this to adrian hernandez i'm more concerned about the people who lost their jobs honestly that's what i'm more worried about you know what i mean i'm more worried about dasha i'm more worried about anthony henry and Stu grayson and others who got sorry if i didn't mention the names no disrespect but i'm worried about them so i know how it feels to lose the job you know i mean not just a job either way you look at this wrestling or not it's still a job and that's how you feed yourself and your family you know what i mean my heart goes out to them that's what i'm more concerned about than what phil said because the people who got let go did work for us and now they have to find another way to make ends meet and that's what concerns me more whether i know them because some i knew very well some i didn't i still my heart goes out to them you know what i mean i'm not saying it's right i'm not saying it's wrong what i am saying it's the business people get hired and fired daily it's just part of it but still it doesn't mean it doesn't leave me heartbroken that some of the people like dasha that i won't see every week who i loved seeing every week who put like a smile on my face every week i saw you see what i'm saying yeah that's what i'm more concerned about and that's what you know i care about that more that's it Recalling her return to WWE, Naomi said this to going ringside. It's been a roller coaster ride, but it's been a great journey, and I'm extremely excited and happy to be back, working my way back to the top. WWE is home. It was never a doubt about returning. It was just a matter of when and me wanting to prove some things and do some things that I needed to do for myself. I did that. I accomplished that. It was just time. I missed it so much. WWE is always family.
Talking about his career in football, Roman Reigns told ESPN, I wanted to have an impact on young men. I wanted to be the way Emmett Smith and Michael Jordan and Joe Montana and the stars of when I was a child, the way they made me feel. I wanted to make other young athletes feel that way. But no matter what, it was either you're going to be a wrestler or you're going to be a football player, a superstar of some sort. Going over the talks that she has had with AEW President Tony Khan prior to her joining the company, Mercedes Monet said this, 298.5 stick to wrestling. We've, Tony Khan, been talking for quite some time now, and I just think the alignment just felt so right to now in 2024, and yeah, it's just been so many beautiful things in the works. When he called me the first time, I'm like, I'll think about it, TK. We gotta build this relationship. Let me keep on watching. Let me keep on seeing this women's division. And I kept on watching the women's division and my dreams just became so much bigger and brighter and I knew instantly I wanted AEW to be my home. Reacting to his release from AEW, Gravity wrote this on X. I just can say thank you, AEW, and thank you, Mr. Tony Khan, for this time in the company. I am grateful for the moments I was able to experience being with the company and for all the learning I took away. It's time to continue my path and see what destiny has for me. For an update on the sex trafficking lawsuit against WWE and Vince McMahon, Ringside News wrote on January 25th, Janelle Grant, a former WWE staff member, initiated legal proceedings against WWE, John Laurinaitis, and Vince McMahon, alleging incidents of sexual assault, emotional abuse, and sex trafficking dating back to March 2019. These allegations have cast a dark shadow over McMahon's reputation and sparked widespread condemnation within the industry. In an article published on NYPost.com on April 1st, it was revealed that Grant had written what was described as a love letter to McMahon on December 24th, 2021, in which she expressed affection and devotion towards him. An excerpt from the letter was published by The Post, revealing Grant said, sentiments after almost three years together it's like my life isn't even real to me unless you're there and in it and i'm sharing it all with you in a recent interview with post wrestling and wrestlenomics and callus addressed the release of a love letter purportedly written by grant characterizing it as an attempt to intimidate her and engage in victim shaming responding to rosenberg's observation that grant's letter underwent multiple drafts Callus emphasized that coercing someone to revise a love letter numerous times seemed nonsensical and pointed to it as evidence of misconduct on McMahon's part. He asserted that Grant's repeated revisions were not indicative of genuine affection, but rather stemmed from fear of potential repercussions. It was a tactic to intimidate Janelle and victim shame her. Ms. Grant's letter is multiple pages, includes details of their relationship, and indicates she wrote 24 drafts. It makes no sense to coerce someone to write 24 drafts of a multiple page love letter for vince mcmahon it's further proof of misconduct redoing and editing the letter it wasn't love it was fear of repercussions she grant was frankly an emotional prisoner and was asked to write a love letter by vince mcmahon this isn't a new thing like gotcha it happens when people are sex trafficked Callis likened Grant's situation to that of an emotional prisoner, suggesting that she may have felt compelled to comply with McMahon's request. She underscored the seriousness of the situation by drawing parallels to instances of individuals being coerced in cases of sex trafficking. According to Callis' statements to Post slash WrestleNomics, the Paul referenced by Grant in her letter is 
Paul Mangieri, who serves as an executive assistant for WWE. Additionally, sources familiar with WWE informed them that Mickey Mangieri, another individual, also worked as an assistant to McMahon. In response to Grant's letter, McMahon's attorney, Jessica Taub Rosenberg, asserted that the multi-page document, which underwent 24 drafts, is indicative of a consensual relationship between Grant and McMahon. Rosenberg dismissed the notion that Grant was coerced into writing the letter, arguing that its extensive revisions suggest otherwise. Ms. Grant's letter is multiple pages, includes details of their relationship, and indicates she wrote 24 drafts. It makes no sense to coerce someone to write 24 drafts of a multiple page love letter. Ms. Grant wrote this love letter to Mr. McMahon. Her attorney is now desperately trying to explain it away because it shows the relationship was consensual and the lawsuit's allegations are a sham. The false explanation that it was coerced is nonsense. Ms. Grant's letter is just one piece of evidence demonstrating the relationship was consensual and her allegations in the lawsuit are false. There are more pieces of evidence like this to come that will prove her claims are meritless. Callis stated that McMahon and Laurinaitis have been served with a summons requiring them to respond by mid-May. She also mentioned that Grant is still grappling with the trauma of the events outlined in the lawsuit. For someone who, because of what happened to her, suffering from PTSD and other ailments, she's resilient. We've been talking on the phone and talking to her a lot recently, so she's okay. Despite facing challenges, Callis emphasized Grant's resilience, noting that they have been in frequent communication with her recently and that she is coping adequately. And this was your Pro Wrestling News Update. I hope you're all having a great day. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see y'all later.